Welcome back to the Shabbos Treasure series. I'm Gila Ross, host of the Power Up podcast, and I'm here together with my co-host, Rabbi Samuel Ross, and we are delighted to be able to share a weekly idea that you can take into your Shabbos and upgrade and beautify immediately. Enjoy. Week number nine. So we're actually week number one tonight. And it's interesting, I did the session yesterday. We did the session yesterday. We thought we we're going to do candle lighting and Kiddush and Havdalah and do that all in about seven or eight minutes. We barely got through the candle, candle lighting part. So we're going to really focus on the candle lighting part. And before, I, I, right now we have more men than ladies. Um, somebody sent me, actually two people tonight have been in touch with me about it, thinking that it's very much a women's mitzvah which we'll see, but it's absolutely a man's mitzvah as well. It could be that the wife is doing it on behalf of the house, as we will see, but before you start running away, um, do not run away. This is very, very much a uh, mitzvah that needs to get done inside the house. And there are times when, as the male, you will light it, um, <coughs> even though granted, usually it is a female that lights it. But, uh, but we've got to make sure we know what we're doing and how to get it done. Okay, with that said and done, Gilla, maybe you want to start? Uh, should we, should yeah. We, should we begin? All right. So, again, there is, it is primarily, as, as Rabbi Ross said, it is pri- um, primarily a woman's mitzvah, which means that all things being equal, um, the woman will be the one to light it, to light Shabbat candles. If, for whatever reason, the woman cannot light it, isn't home, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and there's only a man in the house, then the man um, should light um, candles. Okay, so and uh, I'm just thinking, Gela, like occasions that I have uh, would have lit candles over again. We've we've been married now about eighteen years. I would never have seen you. <laughs> yeah, you would never have seen me. So I'm just thinking the times that I would have lit. So um, times when Gela has been away, let's say she's done an NCSY Shabbaton, something like that. We used to work in North America, and she would have gone away with the teenagers. There were definitely times I was left at home. And when the baby was born, um, last, our last yeah. baby. The, lo- the last time the baby was born is actually in Manchester, was on a Shabbos. Actually, did you like that? Was it was because she was already about mitzvah. Um, I'm, pre- I'm pretty sure that I did. Um, it's, uh, so again, I was discussing this with a couple of people earlier. It is preferable, um, all things being equal. Um, it's like this. I want to be clear with this. A, a, the candles have to be lit in the house. That's a mitzvah of Shabbos. Let's assume we're doing the mitzvah. So you have to light the candles. Um, the first preference goes to the wife. Second preference is the husband. Third preference is a girl over bat mitzvah. If a girl under bat mitzvah did it, it wouldn't work. Like uh, the husband would still have to redo it. Um, so it would have been, again, when Gila was away, again, it could have been in theory, let's say I would have had to have gone to Sean, I wouldn't have been around in theory, and so it should have been bat mitzvah, could have done it for me. But those are the sort of occasions that I, as the husband, would have done it, have done it. And I, I want to go further. There are, there are men who like to be involved in the mitzvah. I remember my father growing up, he used to light them like an hour before Shabbos and blow them out. That way he was like, you know, preparing the flames to make sure they're ready, easy to, um, ready to light. You know, there are various things. Maybe but, the husband uh, will get think, them ready. I think that's actually a custom yeah. for, for, the hus- for the men to take some part in, in um, the Shabbat candles and, and to prepare them, either to put them out or whatever, right. or even to, I think that the lighting and blowing them out is, is from the days where it would make it easier yeah. to light. Let's say, but... Um, if there is a fist fight, or well, not literally, between the husband and the wife, and the husband is so eager to it, do this isn't particular Isn't that a discussion mitzvah, for another class? <laughs> absolutely. Um, but if there, the husband is so passionate that he wants to do this particular mitzvah, the wife does get preference because this is her, uh, primarily her mitzvah. Okay, but we've been clear that this is absolutely a mitzvah on the home. Like um, someone who is somewhat religious recently said to me, actually a uh, fairly religious said to me, you know, um, he lives you know, by himself, whatever his circumstances are, and he didn't realize <laughs> you know, that it was his mitzvah. Well, it's no one on the call, um, but it's, um, I'm not trying to be personal. Someone who wasn't on the call, not on the call right now, said to me, you know, he didn't realize that uh, under his circumstances that he should be lighting. And it's a mistake. Absolutely, he has to be lighting. If there's no wife around for whatever reason, absolutely the candles have to be lit. And you can't rely on a girl or a daughter who's under bar mitzvah. It, it, it does not work. Um, <laughs> Rabbi? Yes. David has just asked me a question and I- yeah. Uh, I just uh, all right. He said, "What if?" Want to ask it. We want to hear your voice. He does. He was too shy. He said, "What if the mother's away? Yeah. The husband's not Jewish. 
and the daughter is under bat mitzvah. <laughs> There's no hope. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he stumped me. He made me lost for words. So uh, again, there, there are all all types of circumstances. Can't always do everything. Well, the husband's not required to do it, and the daughter's yeah. not required to either. Obligated to either. The, the girl, in theory, could light. There's nothing wrong with girls lighting. Um, I, I I know that. I think the Lubavitch so they've custom. taken on, but it, but it's it, it, it it's not. I don't, their original custom, meaning, I, I checked into this, I think the Aruch HaShulchan is one of the great Jewish codifiers. I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think he speaks about it from all the way back in Europe. So, you know, you could have somebody, a girl under bar mitzvah like a light. There's nothing, you know, it's a beautiful thing. You know, it's, again, it's not your custom, it's not your custom. It, it, you know, most of, I think most of the Ashkenazi world, it's not our custom. Um, but, um, you know, under those circumstances, maybe maybe, maybe the girl could light. Um, okay, okay, uh, uh, again, they're all... All types of scenarios. Okay, great. Okay. All so right. Before we begin, well, we've already began, so yeah. it's a bit late to say that now. But before we dive right into the hows and the whats and the wheres, etc., let's talk about the wives. Mm -hmm. Does anyone have any ideas about why we light Shabbat candles? Or what's the what's the depth to the mitzvah? Because why we light it? We light it because it's a mitzvah because God told us. But what's the depth of this mitzvah? And I think. Um, if you know it, if you, if you learn about it, you'll, you will get a new appreciation for it, Shabbat. Is it to show the significance of the Shabbos? It is, and we're going to talk about how it shows the significance of Shabbat. Absolutely. So, so on is it? Beautiful. Any other, any other any, Anyone else? Well, Sadie's just uh, appeared in the room, and she I says, think... and she says, wants to remember... And one she's more. right. We're, we're going to get to that later when, when we talk about how many <laughs> candles. She's absolutely right. There we go. Represents and, and, the two candles. But anyone else? <laughs> any other reasons we liked? All right. So I'm going to I'm going to give you three reasons that we like we liked. So um, Darren said to show the significance of Shabbat, and I think the first two reasons um, really show that, right? So the first one is to honor Shabbat, right? Like if you imagine. You know, you want to take someone special out for a special evening. You go to a, you know, dimly lit restaurant where there's candles on the table. It, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's an atmospheric, right? Like it's a certain aura in, in the restaurant that you're going in when you, when you have those candles. So that's the idea that we honor Shabbat by having these candles to, to add to the honor of, of the day. The second reason is enjoyment, right? And think about it. On Shabbat, you're not allowed to switch on and off lights. Imagine if you had no light in your home and you're sitting around in darkness, how much would you enjoy that meal on a scale of zero to 10? We're Dar not, we're not Darren, you like eating in the dark? We're not just no. the, 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 the how good the food is. We're talking about just how it, enjoyable it is. It makes the food better. If you can especially see. the color, especially the round colors. It makes them really come out when you glow in the dark. So, um, and of course, our, 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 another beautiful reason, reason number three. And then three. the third reason, is um, again, another beautiful reason is, is for Shalom Bayit, right? So peace in the home, harmony in the home. And it's similar to the second reason that, imagine if you know there's no lights in the home and you walk in and someone's left, someone nameless has left their shoes lying around and you go tripping over the shoes because you can't see and it's dark. It, you know, when there's dark, there, there's more opportunities for argument and disagreement. And we're still traumatized because the husband's been trying to insist that it's his meant to light the candles. So uh, we, we really try to get past that point. That the, that the light really adds to Right, so, so that, those are the three reasons to honor Shabbat for the enjoyment and to increase the peace in our home why we light Shabbat you, candles. You simply said, now what do we light this? Before we go into uh -huh. what, what we light, what happens when we light candles? So general ca custom is that at the time that the woman lights candles, um, Light, um, lights candles that's when she accepts Shabbos right so at the time when she makes the blessing so generally what happens is we light the candles first and then we make the blessing and this is the reason why because as soon as you've made the blessing you've accepted Shabbos so if you would do it that way if you would like usually when we when we do um, um, a mitzvah right we first make the blessing and then and then we, and then we do it but if you do it that way you wouldn't be able to light the candles because You've already bought in Shabbos. So we light the candles and then we say the blessings. So this and this is where it gets tricky. Richard, Andrew, Darren, Stephen. If any of you were ever lighting candles in Shabbos, which you might do every week or once in a while, you'd actually you flip the order. 
do you mean by that? Try to confuse you as much as I possibly can. Because it's like this, when a female lights candles, she's brought in Shabbos automatically with the candles. A male has not. Because a male may well be going, may, may well be going to shul. <coughs> a, may, a male doesn't necessarily, he might have a minifer. So, <laughs> so a male, <coughs> sorry about the cough. A male does not, because again, the, really, you're supposed to make the bracha before you do the mitzvah. The woman can't do it that way, because once she's made the bracha, it's Shabbos. So she can't light. But the man can keep to the regular order. So if any of you, Andrew, if you're lighting tomorrow night, let's say, you're going to do it the other way around. You're going to continue as usual. You're going to make the bracha, and then you light. But uh, just make sure that the females in the room know that uh, when, the day that they light, they can't. <coughs> that is the difference between men and women, the way that they light. Right. Okay, and there are extenuating circumstances when a woman can not bring in showers at the time, but that's beyond yeah. the scope of yeah. this. And you, usually when, when, once she's lit. That, that's when Shabbos... Okay, Shabbos so now we're up to our other question of what do we like with? What do we like with, guys? Let's open it up to the floor or the Zoom. Um, what, what, you, what, what can we like with? What can you like with? Darren, what do you like with? What, um, matches. Oh, good. Okay. And what do you like with the matches? What can you use as, as the fuel for the flame? Is what well, you could take, you could take it from another candle if you if you so Dan, desire. Darren is going with the candle. Anything else you yeah. could use other than a candle? Oil. Yes, and actually, olive oil is 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 a bit pre more preferable to use. Some people actually have the custom to to use olive oil. They have these little glass cups and they use olive oil. Yes. Yeah. Candles um candles are absolutely fine. Candles work as well, well but ca olive oil is number one. Now, what happens if let's say you're either in a place where you cannot light a flame, for example, you're in the hospital over Shabbat, or you are, it's just before candle lighting and you suddenly realize you've run out of candles and you don't have enough time to even go to a neighbor to do it. In, in that situation, you could use an electric light. How you do yeah. would switch the electric light on, but you wouldn't make a blessing on it. Right, so in, in, in extenuating circumstances when there, it, where you have no oil or, or, or candles to light, you can use a, you can switch on electric light, but don't make a blessing. But you're still um, fulfilling the mitzvah that way. Okay, now if Sadie's still around, we're going to ask her this question. But if she's not, everyone else can. How many candles? How many candles do you light? <laughs> Come on, say it. Two. Two. Right. Okay. So the prevalent custom. And Sadie, if you're listening, I think I think we're going to teach you something new tonight. The present custom is to light two. The actual halachic requirement is is fulfilled by even lighting one candle. Now, as Sadie told us earlier, the reason why there's two is because there's two different aspects of Shabbat. When when um, there's the Ten Commandments are written two times in in the Torah. And each time when, when the mitzvah of Shabbos is given in the Ten Commandments, they're given with a different word. The first time is, I don't remember which one, but one of the times it's with Shamar and one of the times it's with, with Zachar, which um, Shamar means um, to guard and Zachar means to remember. And it's talking about the two different aspects of, Sh of Shabbat. There are positive things that we go and we do to honor Shabbat. And then there are things that we refrain from doing in order to protect the sanctity of Shabbat. So to to commemorate those two different aspects of, of Shabbat, we, we, um, we light the two candles. Um, now, why is it important to know that there's a basic requirement that, that the mitzvah is fulfilled with one? So if God, you know, if it comes a situation where you only have one candle left in the house and you only light one candle, you should know that you've fulfilled it. But there's also another time. Um, before I say that, I'm going to I'm going to add on um, another another piece of. Can I ask you a very quick question? If you only yes. have one candle, can you slice it in half and make it into two candles? If you have time, you can. I mean, it's it's you're, you're raising a good point, which is the question of how long should, does it have to last, and it should last long enough to last you until the meal, right? Well, like, or at least into night. It depends how quick you eat, eat the meal. Um, it doesn't have to last at the end of the meal, but at least you should benefit from it during the meal. Yeah, that's, but, that's what it is. Yeah, but it, again, it could be that, like in summer months, you like a bit earlier that you know if you have a certain amount of oil or, or a certain size candle, then it's going to last. You know, if you in the summer you're lighting at seven forty-five and 
you know, it doesn't really get dark later. So, you know, you, you, sh you, should, you, sh you should make sure that it's going to last uh, um, quite, a, quite a bit of time. So, Darren, yeah. so that, the answer to that question would be that if it's probably better to light one candle that's going yeah. to last long enough last longer. Than, yeah. than two two candles that won't last um, um, yeah. until the things. And, and Richard, Richard had a question? Uh, Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, at, at the risk of sounding like a two runners sketch, we actually light four candles because... Oh, which brings us... Why? Do you know why, Richard? uh well jc has got one and emily's got one right so there's a very very common practice um, um, um custom which is a beautiful custom as well is to light to add on one extra light for each child and the idea really there is 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 where every every child obviously is a beautiful neshama and every neshama that comes into the world brings its own special light to the world and that's what we're kind of um, um, showing when we when we add on one extra light um for each child so why is that? Which brings me back to the to what, the, what I was going to say. Why it's important to know that the halachic requirement is fulfilled with just one. So we have that custom. So thank God, every, every Friday we are lighting ten candles. Now, what happens if it's a uh, rush and we haven't discussed what happens if we're running late yet? But we will discuss that late, not, um, 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 in a bit. <coughs> but if I don't have enough time to light all ten then it's better for me to just like the one and know that I fulfilled the, the requirement, right? So that, that's, um, um, that's why it's important information. But thank you, Richard. Yes, that is one custom, um, extra cost, uh, cut to add one on for each child. Does anybody know what, what happens? It's a almost a unique situation. If God forbid somebody decides one week they can't be bothered to light, doesn't get around, <laughs> can't be bothered, God forbid. The week that they, the next week, they have to light an extra candle and continue it. It's, it's, it's a, yeah. a fascinating penalty. Like, forever. <laughs> Stephen just said it as well. You know, like, you, only girls can light a candle. Obviously, men to light the candles. Then, obviously, you said you like 10. Can you light for, like, obviously, I like four as well, one for each girl. Right. Can you light for the boys as well? Like, yeah, you know, yeah. The yeah. custom to light for, for, for each child is, is each child, regardless of whether they're a girl or a boy. Yeah. And again, I want to be super clear. It's a mitzvah. Candle lighting is a mitzvah on the, on the husband as well. It's just that one person does it in the home. That's usually the wife, all things being equal. Um, uh, absolutely. You know, if the wife wasn't around, then it's, it's a mitzvah. The husband has a mitzvah, just he fulfills it for his wife. Yeah. No, even saying, obviously, the, the mitzvah. Even saying, obviously, the mitzvah of lighting the candles yeah. is for a woman. Is that why Havdalah is the mitzvah for the man? So, <coughs> uh, Havdalah is, is, is a, we'll, we'll do it next week, please, God. And Darren asked yeah. me a question last, last week about Kiddush. Maybe we'll focus next week on, on why specifically it's for men. And Darren asked me a different question about standing or sitting. Uh, we'll, see, we'll, see, we'll see that a little bit next week. Uh, Again, many things the man will, uh, for, again, anybody could, but let's say the man for argument's sake will say a bracha on behalf of the family. Um, this is specifically, um, again, all things being equal, the, the wife will do it. There's various reasons for, for that. Maybe it goes all the way back to Eve. Um, if she, that, 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 you know, she was involved in inciting towards the sin. Um, and it's rectification. Okay, there's, there's various different reasons for, for it. But the man, I'll, I'll, again, to be clear, the man is equally obligated in the mitzvah, mitzvah of candles. It's just the question is, who is the one who's got the primary mitzvah to actually light it? Okay, so that, that's the only uh, difference over there. Okay, okay so when, 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 do we light, when do we light candles? So the custom, the prevalent custom in most places is 18 to 20 minutes before sundown, right? Um, but it, you can't light it any, any later than two minutes before sundown. And at the end of it, we're gonna, we'll, we'll tell you that there's an app where you can actually find the the correct the time for every single week for wherever you are in the world. Um, that, that, that's important to know that the, uh, yeah. the latest time you can light is two minutes before sun sun sunset. In a place like um, Leeds or Manchester, it's very very early this time of year. If, unfortunately, if you miss it for whatever sundown. reason, sundown, not sunset, right? Is there a difference between? So, so, no, so, same thing. Yeah, yeah, so but same thing. unfortunately, if if you've missed if you've missed that time, you've missed that time. It's not something you can. So what what do you do, Rabbi? If if I've missed the time. What's my mitzvah then? My mitzvah is not to light. Yeah, your mitzvah then is not to light because you'd be breaking Shabbos by lighting. Yeah. So, so if you if you miss that two minutes, then then it just, is it is it is, what, it is what it is, and uh, yeah.
Okay, the earliest time is known as um, Plag Hamincha, which is about one and a quarter halachic hours before sunset. So it depends on, on the time of the year, how long it is. But again, this app, Maizmanim um, app, uh, will have the exact time. So you can actually look it up every Friday to see what your window is to light. And again, those of you who were with us last week, if you listened to the recording, that it's the same as the earliest time you can bring in Shabbos. The earliest time you can ever bring in Shabbos is at one and a quarter halachic hours before sunset, which this time of year we work out as about 40 minutes or 35 minutes. Um, and in the summer at one and a quarter hours, because of the way the day works, it's probably about an hour and 45 minutes. <laughs> uh, if you've ever watched, um, uh, you know, women light candles, they oftentimes what they do is, you know, they'll do the waving and then and then they'll they'll you, 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 they make the blessing and then they seem to be like muttering things. What's going on there? Um, so it's a very very opportune time to pray, specifically as well to pray for the children. You can pray for anything. You can pray in whatever language you want, whatever language you, you feel comfortable with. But there's actually a beautiful prayer that we that that is composed that we can say again. This it's in Hebrew, but it's in English as well, which we will send to the group after this call. That and anyone that's listening to the recording, um, just get in touch with us, and we will we will we can send it to you as well. One final point. For this evening. When does early Shabbos begin, Rabbi? You want to tell us? <laughs> so what the question is, what is early Shabbos? Have you ever heard the expression, we're bringing Shabbos early? Or this time of year, it doesn't really exist because every Shabbos is an early Shabbos. Although our early Shabbos, for our purposes, is the late Shabbos. What, what, is, what is an early Shabbos? I'll tell you what early Shabbos is. Well, let's, let's go by the summer. So in theory, let's say a sun, that sunset is, let's say, 9.15. Let's say. So you can bring in Shabbos at about 9.00. Early Shabbos, it will be at a one and a quarter halachic hours beforehand, which will probably be about 7.30, 7.45, depending on the week. So that would be an early Shabbos. So the question is, if my shul brings in an early Shabbos in the summer at 7.45, but Shabbos, the time, you look at the calendar, it says 9.15. Am I allowed to ca carry on working with whatever I'm doing between 7.45 and 9.15? They brought in an early Shabbos, but do I have to bring in the early Shabbos? So it's a, it's a famous question, and it's a very, it's a very relevant question. You've missed it, you're not going to shore. You know, it can be a hundred things that are going on. So this is pretty much the situation. If, there's, if you're in a city where there is only one shore, okay. there's only one community, which I don't think Manchester or Leeds have that. You've got a few. But unless there's a place that was only one, then maybe the whole place has to go after it. But, um, but once you're in a place with more than one shore, you don't, you're not obligated to follow that shore this Shabbos. You know, without even getting into the jokes of, you know, the shore that I go to, the shore that I don't go to, go to, someone on this call told me a couple of weeks ago. But the point is that once you have more than one shawl in town, you are not obligated to follow by the timing of that shawl. Um, it's only, you know, if there's, if there's only one shawl in, if there's only one shawl in town. Um, and I said one final point, there's actually one final point, and then we'll do a quick summary, which is once the wife, let's say she likes her home, the husband doesn't necessarily bring in Shabbos then. Let's say the wife is lit 20 minutes before Shabbos. The husband, he brings in Shabbos either when, if he's got, he could be, could be he's going to Shul. <coughs> so what, uh, um, in the summer, it's when he gets to the last bit of Lechadodi, the last verse where they sing it, that's where Shabbos comes in, or it comes in for him just before sunset. Just because the wife is lit, the husband does, doesn't necessarily have to bring in Shabbos, and vice versa. If the husband goes to Shul in the summer and he's doing Lechadodi and brought in Shabbos, but it could be that the wife could even light a little bit later. There are some, you know, who say the wife could light earlier, but, um, you know, it, it seems that the wife could, uh, she's not necessarily, you know, beholden by that and could still light, um, could, could still light later. So that is where we are. Let's, let's, uh, again, let's do a very quick summary of the points. Maybe we'll just uh, fly through them. Everyone's benefit. All right. Give me a minute. Where did we start? Where we started we with the exciting news that it's week nine. I don't know if there's exciting news going on any of our lives right now. Like uh, I do. Oh, okay. It's Thursday, which means it's almost <laughs> the weekend. <laughs> okay, let's uh, uh, let's let's fly through this. So, okay, so we said the three reasons why we light Shabbos candles: to honor Shabbos, to add to our enjoyment of Shabbos, and to increase the marital harmony, the peace. Not not all the harmony in the home as well. To reduce the bickering, increase the the harmony. Okay. So, so primarily it's, it's the woman that does it and, and usually she accepts um, Shabbos as soon as she makes the blessing, which is why she lights first and then makes the blessing. We 
light with either candles or olive oil in ex extenuating circumstances you can light with um, an electric light but you wouldn't make a blessing on on it um, when custom is 18 to 20 minutes before sunset but you can do it up to no later than two minutes before sunset and you've got a leeway of about one and a quarter halachic hours before sunset to light unto how many? The basic requirement is fulfilled. The mitzvah is fulfilled with lighting one. Most the, the most prevalent custom is to light two, and there's also a, a very widespread custom of lighting and one extra for each child. Um, what uh, obviously, if, if a person's running late, then the mitzvah is not to light. And what did you want to tell them about early Shabbos? Again, the early, early Shabbos. So, um, again, it's, it's uh, if there's one shawl in town, you follow that. If there's more than one shawl, then in the summer, you could that week choose to bring it in later. The wife doesn't necessarily have to go after the time the husband's bringing it in. Husband doesn't necessarily have to go after the time the wife is bringing it in. For the husband, for the wife, it's when she lights. And for the husband, it's either just before sunset or when he's in shawl uh, in the summer, which is a little bit after, you know, because sunset's much later when they get to the end of La Chadodi. With that, we wish you all a wonderful Shabbos, and uh, Shabbos. Uh, we hope uh, you have this uh, really experience this beautiful mitzvah tomorrow night of lighting and getting the prayers in while you're doing it, you or other members of the family. Have a good one. Or good Shabbos, you. thank you. Good thank you. Thank you so much for listening. I'd love to hear if this resonated. You can get in touch with me. You can find me on Instagram. It's Gila Ross. And please take a moment to rate, review and subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss out. Thank you for your time and have a wonderful day.